have to sort this out on my own. Without the council. And without you. I have to sort this out on my own, without the council. I have to sort this out on my own, without the council. I have to sort this out on my own, without the council.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Diane in the Forest. Uh, awesome episode coming, as usual, with special guests. We're going to dive in here. We're going to figure out which clone commander we are. Uh, we're going to laugh at some stupid articles. <laughs> um, we got some amazing artwork revealed for High Republic that just makes you want to cry, but also feel inspired at the same time. Um, we also haven't gotten a chance to talk about some new casting uh, news for Ahsoka. And then, as always, we want to hang out and talk with y'all in the chat. That's all coming up right now on Diet in the Force. Unseen for generations, a tiger in the Force. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Die in the Force, episode 55. As Chaco mentioned, yes, we have a lot to talk about in the Star Wars universe. But uh, first, a couple of announcements. I do want to touch on this a little bit because up until December 12th, um, there is a sale going on at Level Up Lightsaber. Uh, a lot of the hilts like Ahsoka, um, Luke Skywalker, a lot of the legacy hilts right now, the, re the replicas are in fact heavily discounted right now. So go to seventhelement.net slash lightsabers to get your lightsaber. Second, I thought my computer died. Okay. That's scary. It legitimately sounded like, like a processor error, and then until you realized that that was Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Yes. That's I was like, I'm scared. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing, Christina Parcel. Um, so, yes, uh, better than a stick, as Haley says in the chat. Uh, SeventhElement.net slash lightsabers until December 12th. So get your stuff today. We also want to uh, announce that episode two of Voyage of Destruction, I mean, Destruction, is up on Darth Chaco's channel. <laughs> Um, yeah, please check it out. Um, St. Pound has already seen it, but, um, I, <laughs> there's, it's, it's, we had a lot of fun playing, you know, our tabletop Star Wars RPG with Cal 4, with, uh, Shayla Wren, with Brooke B. Dazzler, with JB, with, uh, Malik, um, you know, myself and Pep, and it was just a ton of fun. There is going to be some crazy twists and turns if you enjoyed the first episode. I ended on a cliffhanger. <laughs> um, don't don't hate me. Um, <laughs> please check it out. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say. Um, and we are joined, of course, by Kiki from TikTok. <laughs> um, introduce yourself to uh the audience let us know where they can find you what you do in content and uh what's your favorite star wars movie and be prepared for hate oh oh my goodness yes you <laughs> asked the big question didn't you um so my name is kiki i live in the pacific northwest the best region of the united states and yes i will take any commentary on that but i will not always see it as valid um I have been a Star Wars fan since I want to say roughly about the age of seven years old. And um, you can find me on TikTok at Black P and W Lady. I talk about Star Wars. Right now I'm on kind of a a Dark Knight Rises phase to talk about Bane. So just be prepared. <laughs> I will come back around to like Boba Fett when the book of Boba Fett gets a bit closer, but right now we're talking a lot about Bane and, and Tom Hardy. Um my favorite star wars movie oh my goodness i might put it it's either a tie between return of the jedi or a new hope it's a very yeah. very tie yeah okay. i was joking about oh, being love? prepared for hate we don't no we don't do that <laughs> <laughs> uh so you have some supporters in here uh chris star wars lawyer is yelling kiki <laughs> um, Bruce Givens, Kiki, awesome to see you on Diet, and of course Haley, Corellia Coffee Works, Kiki, uh, PNW Pride. Uh, as I understand it, she's also Pacific Northwest as well. <laughs> I didn't know that. Good to, good to know I have supporters. The... Uh, Kiki, did you go to uh, Emerald City Comic Con? Okay, so funny story about that. 
Um, I have not been paying attention to anything. And I kind of assumed, well, I assumed that like because of COVID-19 that maybe we weren't having it. And so I just lost track. And then I saw that one of my mutuals, Danielle, is currently at it right now. And I literally found out like Thursday night. And I was like, how lost have I been in the sauce? Like this pandemic... <laughs> I will say, I think like this pandemic has like made, and I'm, I wonder if it's the same for you. It's made me kind of like, I'm not keeping as track of things as I used to. Yeah. Like if this had been a normal year, I would have been on top of this. But I was like, I only have so much energy to dedicate to certain things. Comic Con would be fun to do, but I'm like, that wasn't a priority, obviously, in my brain. So maybe next year, now that I know. I mean, it's kind of the same way for uh, for us and LA Comic Con, at least for me. Um, mm -hmm. I was not paying attention, and uh, apparently, it's going not on. <laughs> I was at San Diego Comic Con. I, wor <laughs> I worked it for all three days. Darth Chalk was like, "I don't know what your excuses are, but I was on top of it this year." <laughs> no, if if I if I wasn't actually working it and like part of their mm -hmm. experience design team, I wouldn't have gone. <laughs> Yeah. Every day I was just like, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can get some music on. I know you guys won't be able to hear it in the call, but it is for the audience. Um, let's check in. Brooke, when your Star Wars ranking TikTok is going around again. I have been seeing that on TikTok recently, and I don't know what like sparks that in like in the in the TikTok community. When people decide to start you know, using that sound again. I mean, at least we're getting new people joining TikTok and new Star. I've seen like 50 new Star Wars accounts like on my For You page in the last week or so. And I'm just like, what's going on in this town? You know? <laughs> the disturbance in the force. Absolutely. Good stuff. People are prepping for Book of Boba Fett, you know? <laughs> that is true. And these new people are also using Brooks uh star wars ranking so have you used it kiki or no i haven't no that's when you're gonna get the the hate <laughs> but don't worry the community's got your back okay i i already like poked the bear earlier this week because i did like i started a series which was what did i call it oh stirring the pot in the star wars <laughs> fandom yes. and i started with ray skywalker and things were going good for about six hours and then i got to the wrong side of TikTok, and people were like you are crazy and i don't know if we can curse on this podcast but okay, yeah. they, they had they had some things to say and i was like well i'll admit it to the other side <laughs> I, I know that i commented on that video and i was like I forget the larger point you were trying trying to make in the video, but I do know that like the the pot was stirred as soon as you yeah. said Ray Skywalker. <laughs> That's all well, you need I to said, do. Yeah, I said um, you would have loved Ray Sky. You would have liked Ray Skywalker if she had been extremely sexualized. Oh, that's right. For example, wearing a bikini, and I know this because you love you loved Princess Leia. And I was all the nuance that I offered and most people understood what I was saying and they liked it. But one person was like, you're completely degrading the hard work that Carrie put into this entire character. And I was like, do you not know that Carrie Fisher absolutely hated that bikini? She was very open. Of, she stirred the pot long before I ever did. She's the, the original pot. <laughs> uh, she was holding she ground zero ladle. <laughs> I mean, but there's uh, there's there's a reason why you know, uh, Padme's uh, clothes were was ripped uh, strategically, and that's also her most popular cosplay. You know, there's. I, I actually remember um, it was last summer. There was a thing that was going around, and it was someone saying, confirming exactly what you're saying, because they were like, "Oh, I would have liked Ray way more like this," and it was like a super sexualized picture of her. <laughs> like with her ass on bb8 it was a weird picture yeah. that was like deeply uncomfortable i was like what is this what is she doing leave bb8 alone right it's also like you know when the people when you confront per, uh, people about their misogyny or internalized misogyny and they're like no but i like ala sakura like you know nothing about this girl she's just a female in star wars that you were like can i list this female <laughs> as a or, yeah, or a female that you feel comfortable with yeah. that doesn't challenge something, you know. 
that made you feel uncomfortable. And even if you did like her from Legends, she was highly sexualized in Legends too. Yeah. All Twi'leks mm-hmm. were. Mm-hmm. Um, before I forget though, going back to um, Brooke really quickly, we have to do this because it is a tradition on this podcast. Farfarawayfactory.com or not .com, Farfarawayfactory on Etsy. Um, B underscore Dazzler on uh, TikTok, but Etsy.com slash shop slash Far Far Away Factory. Look at all the look at that those nice custom shoes, the shirts, the earrings, the jacket. Check it out. Yeah, we make some some awesome things as well as is you know our favorite um, former night sister uh, named Zena. Mm. Same same book is part of our, uh, our our little tabletop RPG. So check her out. Do you play tabletop? I do not. Would you be open to it? I don't know what tabletop is, and I'm just gonna be full on honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. I look. The last time I had played D and D was at, like when I was 13 oh, years old. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, you know Chaco uh, made the Voyage of Destruction. Um, like concept and it was a whole lot of fun and so I, I highly encourage everyone to at least take part in a in a D&D or tabletop RPG session at some point in their life to kind of like round out their nerddom <laughs> yeah and so the reason I say tabletop RPG is because I got called out by JB <laughs> um, another person that was part of our campaign works for a company that makes tabletop games like that oh, okay. and D&D is a brand it's like saying Kleenex for all tissues uh, you know what I mean okay. so <laughs> so he's like it's offensive for you I'm like alright A calm down B okay <laughs> Join Squadron 7. Loading Greatstorm, thank you for joining Squadron 7 and becoming a member. Leave in the chat what starship you want. Uh, I realize how startling that is for you guys to hear. <laughs> it's like this this swell of cinematic aura. You're like, what are you doing? I, was, I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, so yeah, leave it in the chat what starship you would like, and I will add that to the list of squadron pilots. Thank you so much. Your support is highly appreciated. Um, Brooke says, uh, thank you. I almost missed it. My mug just broke and I had to clean up hot chocolate off of the floor. Ouch. That's That's tragic. tragic. Is this, is, this tri- is this the triad? <laughs> I was gonna say it sounds like a sticky situation, but, you know. Dang. But the dyad continues nonetheless. <laughs> I I forgot we had that dyad moment in that in the debunking the Mary Sue argument video. When I was editing <laughs> that, I was like, wow, that did actually happen. Okay. <laughs> um, Jack Brody asks, can you guys tell us your favorite Star Wars project from each medium? That is a thinker. So, I'll have to say the Rising Storm from the book, the books, Vader 2017 from the comics, Empire and The Last Jedi, they they often have a kerfuffle with each other in live action. So it's kind of like 1.1, 1.2. Rebels for the animated shows. What other mediums are there? Games? Jedi Fallen Order? Yeah. What about you guys? I know it's a deep thinker. You're a deep thinker. No, you stole almost all of mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for, for games, um, so basically everything that Pep said, but um, for games, I'm actually going to go with Jedi Academy. Um, and uh, I'm going to add in Legends <laughs> and say, um, uh, but if I have to do a single project, like a single book, then I'm going with um, with Allegiance. It's uh, a bunch of a group of defecting stormtroopers just trying to be good guys in the galaxy. It's it's an interesting book. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I well, if we're talking about Legends as like a separate medium, then for sure. So tour. Yeah. What about you, Kiki? 
So I'm gonna keep it 100% with everybody involved here. I loved Star Wars growing up. And then I kind of like left Star Wars for many years. Um, I grew up reading the expanded universe books back in the day. But then I want to say sometime right after the sequels came out, I kind of petered off and I went off and did other things. And I've just kind of come back to Star Wars because I came back to TikTok and people were like, Luke Skywalker. And I got distracted and now <laughs> I talk about Star Wars a lot on my channel. But I have, like most recently I did read this, the Darth Vader comic, it's from 2020. Mm. Oh and yeah. Then, and I know I might, I might get, I might get hate in the comments, but whatever, y'all can come for me. You can come for my throat. It's the one where he meets up with the former handmaidens and their guarding Padme's tomb. So I've been reading on that one. And um, I don't play video games, but in the way of TV shows, one of my favorites, I have to say, is The Mandalorian. If we're just talking about TV shows, but if we're talking about animated series, I really did like the Clone Wars. It took me a while to get into Clone Wars because I just watched it this last year. And the first season was a bit slow, but by the time mm -hmm. we got to the Mandalore arc, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. I was, <laughs> I was deep in at that point. Awesome, so. awesome. Um, and yeah, if I have, a, I have a strange feeling that when Ahsoka comes out or when Acolyte comes out, that might dethrone my TV show favorite. Mm -hmm. Just because Dark Side, but also Ahsoka. Like, there's so much, like, implications for that show. We're going to talk about it later, but... Yeah, the the rankings are ever-shifting throughout the year, simply because there's so much coming out and so much new. <laughs> um, Loden says, Can I have the Nubian Royal Starship? Are, is he talking about the N1 Starship? Ah, Nubian, huh? Ah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, the, the new in one, yeah, the little uh, yellow fighters, I, I believe, is what he's referring to. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you absolutely can. Um, let me write that down really quickly. Um, and also, Haley says there was a panel at um, Emerald City Comic Con talking about Ray, Mary Sue, and I wish I could have told the people to watch to check out your video because the panel did not do it justice. I mean, if people have time for a two-hour movie. <laughs> we literally went through every point. Yeah, what the, the video we were looking at was was bad and and very disingenuous. So it was hard to not. <laughs> yes. Um. But we didn't we think have... it was going to take that long. But he like no. literally every second, every every word he said was just was wrong. wrong. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we're just like, oh, okay. Like and once we got to the end, we're like, all right, obviously this part is all wrong, but we just, I don't, I can't. <laughs> I mean, just from the beginning, right? You say, you say that Luke is a farmer, a farm boy. That explains his. We're able, we're able to infer skills from that. Ray is a lone scavenger. We get nothing from that, and I'm just like, yo, the, the rest of this video is going to be really tiresome <laughs> if you don't get, if you can't infer like surviving for yeah yeah already it was disingenuous and so like we had to stomach it but we i figured like if we did something that was like halfway people would be like oh you didn't touch on this subject no we're we did everything <laughs> we went yeah. through everything and it took us three hours <laughs> i cut it down to two so have fun <laughs> if you have two hours to burn you know <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, you got some Jack Jedi Ray Academy is, love. Says Jaden Core, yes sir. <laughs> I, I love, there's this this part where like you, your buddy in the Jedi Academy is like, "Hey man, you ever uh, feel like your master's just holding you back?" <laughs> and it's like he says it in like the after school PSA where your your friend offers you drugs, uh, like way. It's you know, it's just like it was just really funny. Yeah. Um. Christina Parcelli says, Legends for the win. I'm not biased for anything. And for those of you who don't know, that is Twin Sons. Oh, okay. I knew okay. Yeah. She she had she had commented on one of the uh, Assemble the strongest Star Wars team according to the spelling in your like the first letters of your your first name. <laughs> right? 
I know that was supposed to be Rocket Raccoon, but to me, you sounded like the mean lady on Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it! Her name, Mom. Mom. Yeah. Um. That was that was a piece of cinematic art that Pixar did, <laughs> and I think we need to be way more grateful as a culture to them for that. <laughs> Are you telling me I don't sound anything I like full time? And I understood that character way better. You didn't do the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. You didn't do the paperwork. Are you telling me I no, don't sound it's, like it's the lit. rocket, the rocket text to speech on TikTok? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying what I heard. I'm like, <laughs> should I do the text to speech three PO? Assemble the, uh, <laughs> assemble the strongest I was team. Based on the first letter of your first name. <laughs> Just the way it's on. <laughs> uh, well, hello, twin son. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for subscribing. Um, do we have any? Uh, do we have anything else that we want to touch on before we go on to the first uh, first segment? Uh, no, we'll jump into it. All right. Yes, we are going to jump into it. Screen rant versus nuance is what I'm calling it because. <laughs> absolutely none was well, taken oh wait actually no the first one is um was it the, the quiz it was the quiz yes um this was a quiz made by uh the follower silas rj brown suggested that we did this um with the chat so i'm gonna send this Just put it to in the people chat. in the chat you guys can take it on your on your own. Let us know what you get in the in the chat. And this is um, which clone commander would you be in Star Wars? Um, and I will take mine on stream. Uh, you guys are w welcome to take it on your own machines. Uh, that sounds really weird, but uh, here we go. What class do you see yourself in? Um, oh, is this like a slider? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slide it. Galactic Marines. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to like go a little bit past Galactic Marines. Although I have no idea what they do. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. Like these sliders don't... I wonder, yeah, I'm like, kind of like, what's the measurement that I'm not seeing happen? I'm not sure either. So I'm not a huge clone person. Mm -hmm. Like, like Crosshair, Rex, that's it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like. You couldn't even come up with a rule of three. <laughs> that's fine. Wait, Crosshair, uh, Rex, and uh, Wrecker. Or Omega. Omega, right? All right, all right. Um, how would you define a successful mission? I mean, your superior officer survived, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the slider after this one is the one I'm most confused by. Uh, I'm gonna have to go fully on objective completed, if mm -hmm. the objective is to rescue civilians, but it is past civilian saved. Um, which Jedi general would you see yourself serving under? Oh man. <laughs> so, so this is where the slider to me makes zero sense. Um, <laughs> how, how is, how is none in between Obi-Wan and Plo Koon? What is that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> no clue. We're going, we're going in on our own with no commander, no general. We're just going to do it. <laughs> You're the general, right? Is that the is that the Anakin Skywalker? Here comes the general. I think I would serve under Mace Windu, to be honest. And I hate to be cl very close to Kiari Mundi, but this is the way that the slider is working. I would not serve under Kiari Mundi. He's a political <laughs> idealist, not a murderer. <laughs> um, but I do like Mace, you know who made this it uh, a follower made this and suggested we do it on dyad and i obliged jack brody but uh yes i picked mace windu on to the next one what would you do if you were left behind i wow really get captured <laughs> who who would like, like 
if there's an option, it's like die. And I was like, not saying that I'd give up completely, <laughs> but if I, which planet am I being left behind on? Yeah, there's a lot of variables. <laughs> right. You know? If it's off, I'm just going to accept what's about to happen. But if it's like Endor, I can try to figure it out. If I were left behind on like, on like a McDonald's, I'd probably start a new life. But <laughs> I don't know if anyone would purposely get captured. No. Yeah, I'm like, I, I mean, I went with start a new life because I feel like, I don't know, the Mitch Hedberg joke of like, you have very much improved your predicament. Like, uh, I guess I'm here. This is where I live now, you know? Like, <laughs> I still think I'd try to get back to it, but I was like, eh, you know, if I can make it, I can make it, but it depends which system I'm on. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Uh, Jack Brood or Xcore Gamer Skill said got Commander Thire. Saint Pat got Commander Cody. Chris is apparently offended by his result. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you prioritize in the battle? Civilians. That's an easy one. You're in the middle of a battle and things turn south. How would you handle this? Um. Turns things turn south. I would retreat and save as many men as possible. That's what I picked. Yeah. And then of that, like, I'm too proud to, like, fight another day. And you're like, but you're just dead then. Do <laughs> you not care about your cause? When I read about <laughs> that, it's embarrassing. I, when I saw that question, it made me think of that case where they had the general that was actually working for the other side. And I am awful with names. If you've ever been on my TikTok, I cannot remember anybody's name. But so the general Lauren? who... Yeah. And I was like thinking of that. And I was like, no. Gotta <laughs> um, back to that moment. Clone Wars. What I find more distressing is like the sliders, to be honest. Like how, like how, like to varying degrees, how much would you retreat? <laughs> and how much men would you save? <laughs> Like, right, I'm right on that. But if I were to go less than that, is that like, am I sacrificing a little bit of men? And what are you gaining in that? <laughs> Some... If I was a commander, I would just be like, okay, I'm going to need someone like with me whose only job it is to like drop, draw up scenarios of how this ends for me. Like yeah. real time, drawing up a scenario. If we pull back, how many miles, how many people are we going to possibly save? Exactly. <laughs> we need analysis. We need tacticians. We need Thrawn. Um, you hear incriminating information about a superior officer. How would you handle this situation? Um, interesting. Take it to the source. Take it to the bridge. <laughs> Boom. That's all I can think of. <laughs> uh, I would find the truth. Although that's like past discussing it with a different superior, I would not. I'd actually like independently investigate it. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris got Fox. <laughs> <laughs> How likely are you to follow an order you find to be unethical? Um, find a better ethical way. I feel like I would I would try to kind of like find a way to follow orders but like I don't know find a workaround you know how Anakin you're always gonna, acts <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna try to pull an Anakin Skywalker yeah you know and I'm not exactly disobeying not orders <laughs> I'm gonna start using that you're pulling a Skywalker Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm not exactly yeah, uh, disobeying, you know. I'm getting exactly the. I didn't obey. <laughs> right. Yeah, it could mean a lot of things. That could mean crashing a ship. Uh, it could mean like yeah, slaughtering innocents. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, in hindsight, maybe saying pulling a Skywalker. We might want to be specific with the Skywalker <laughs> we're talking about. But in, but in this case, then you'd have to be because this is a loaded question. You'd have to be more specific about what is what is unethical. Like if if you were ordered to just kill a bunch of civilians, then you'd be like, mm, "There's no way to finagle that one." 
you'd kind of just have right. to refuse that order. But if there was like a like we need to retreat, leave the civilians, we we don't have time for them or like something like that, then you would find a way to kind of like find a safe route for them. Mm-hmm. At least that's or what if you do. need to bribe somebody, technically you could say that that's an unethical order to bribe someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the same. It's not, I'm not putting it on the same level as like civilian, but I'm saying like you could make that argument that that's unethical behavior. So what is unethical behavior? Yeah. I am putting this on that same level. If you have to steal bread to feed your troops, <laughs> <laughs> on the same on the same level as bribing someone. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just joking. I was gonna say on the same level as like <laughs> as saving civilians. <laughs> pulling, pulling a John Valjean, you have to steal bread. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack Brody got thire. Brian with the bread, got thire. Let's go, Dagovir. Thank you for uh, stopping by. Um, so this one, this slider extra confused me because help them escape was in between arrest them and report them and i feel like i feel like it (laughs) like arrest them should be right beneath kill them right i don't know yeah so it should be report arrest kill right that should be the the progression of the thing help them escape no help them escape is one just one inch extreme Uh, yeah. I'm gonna be my chaotic neutral self and kill them. Sorry. I know people are probably like, "What? What did you do? What did you do? What did you guys do?" I said, "Kill them." <laughs> I arrested them. <laughs> you plucking. found your Jedi general has betrayed you, and I was just thinking. I was like. Okay, so you're going to try to arrest them. This is someone that has powers that you do not. It's going to take minimum, maybe 10 of you to try to take him down successfully, him or her, down successfully, or them. I was like, you got you to make a call, especially if you're in a war zone. I'm imagining right now Chaco is slowly moving that slider a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna stick with the with the arrest them. You know I think. Um, but what's to stop them all. from killing you at the end of the mission? Oh yeah, no, they're. Uh, but I'm, I'm Chaco's just I'm, not surviving. I'm, yeah, no, I'm not surviving. <laughs> I've I've come to terms with that. Chaco's like, we're gonna be ethical about this, okay, folks. <laughs> and then as soon as he says ethical, he just gets shot, or he gets like stabbed by the saber. Um, which one would uh, showcase your individuality the most as a clone trooper? Scars and armor for me. I have the good old fashioned scar across the eye. Like in reality, some people think it's cool. Some people think it's ugly, but I think it's cool because I didn't have to fight in an actual battle to get it. I just had to be a kid. <laughs> I went with tattoos because I've got a bunch of ink. So. Oh, nice. Any yeah. of them you can show? Yeah, I mean, if everyone's okay with me slightly lifting my shirt, like that. Oh, and it's, yeah. yeah. So it's a rose because I did a cover up because when I was young and foolish, I had a tattoo that I'm not proud of. So I covered it up. And then the line on that was a, a line from my father's, a voicemail he left me before he passed away. And so they put that right on me. So, yeah. And then I've got a bunch of other tattoos all over my body, but it's winter and it's cold in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember my days, my days up in the PNW, and uh, it do be getting cold. It is. It's getting cold right now, and I'm in, I'm in LA. <laughs> so that I can only imagine. Uh, okay. So I'm done with this, and I got Commander Fox. Oh, geez. I got, yeah, I got CC 1010, which is Commander Fox as well. I got fire. What are the, so what are the results? Like, what are the, what's the pool of results? Is it just fire and Fox? Because I feel like this is what everyone's getting. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless everyone that's in the Star Wars TikTok community are either Thire and Fox. 
What? No, no, no. St. Pat got um, Cody. Never mind. So there's at least three. Right? Well, I mean, I don't agree with my result, but that was a great quiz. Um, lots mm -hmm. of, um, lots of, uh, you know, nuance in the in, in between the sliders. That, that was an interesting kind of mechanic. I, I'm usually just used to selecting multiple choice or out of multiple choice. But thank you for sending in that quiz, Silas R.J. Brown. Um, so let's move on to this topic by Screen Rant, which I'm pretty sure we can just like dismantle in the next five minutes. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Chaco. What's up? What's up with this? Uh, this article. Uh, yeah, they try to. I mean, it says that the Last Jedi misunderstands how the Skywalker bloodline works, um, and the way they frame it is that um, they're they're trying to say that that's not how the Force works because there are other Jedi that don't have such a lineage. You know, they bring up Obi Wan, Yoda, Mace Windu, and all this stuff. And it's, I don't know, it's just not relevant um, to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's it's one of those things where you're like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess I don't even have an anal a snappy analogy to go with it. It's like if, if someone has a, a, a cleft chin and they're like, yeah, I inherited this from my father. And then... You're like, yeah, but these people don't have it, and and they didn't inherit it from their fathers. And you're like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I don't <laughs> like those are not. When I read it, I actually had to read it two times because I was confused <laughs> about what the argument was. And so I like, and I mean, I've I've taught English before, so I went back and I was like, okay, where is the argument? Okay, so the argument is that the let. The Last Jedi treats the Skywalker family as Jedi or Force royalty. And he's like, and he was giving examples of like, or Mr. Miller was giving examples of like, oh, but you know, they talk about the Skywalker blood or the Skywalker. I was like, this sounds like sitting down with my family though. Like, and Star Wars, the movies are all around the Skywalker family. So it makes sense that people are talking about their family's heritage if the center of this story is that family mm -hmm. that's what i would expect i mean that's kind of like what you hear at a family reunion or a family get together oh they've got the the will the williams nose or they've got the so-and-so's eyes yeah so the the article says the skywalker family includes most of the key characters in the star wars franchise leading some to incorrectly treat it like a royal bloodline um this already is off to a bad start in general because they go on to use lines from the last jedi such as you know luke saying that mighty skywalker blood or um snoke speaking to kylo ren son of darkness heir apparent to lord vader and i kind of feel like this article like mistakes fulsome for for you know actuality like we we know that snoke is just blowing smoke up kylo ren's ass he is literally embellishing and being like mm -hmm. oh you oh the, uh, the grandson of darth vader you know he's propping him up he's making he's he's what? you know it's a manipulation technique yes yeah and then he if like in the next in that very same scene chides him for not living up to that legacy <laughs> yeah and in uh in luke's case um he was again he was in the middle of like a monologue like satiring or satirizing his own legend so when he talks about yeah. you know training ben he's like with that mighty skywalker blood like th that's like the sentiment of the galaxy right so there's he, context to it. yeah yeah so he's not exactly not this movie is not purporting that the skywalker bloodline is a royal bloodline in any way mm -hmm. so i kind of feel like this article is well as i said it in the note in the show notes 
misunderstanding La the Last Jedi and the use of embellishment and satire in dialogue. Because there's a lot of dialogue that, if if taken really seriously, changes the whole meaning of Star Wars. But we but we know what nuance is, and we know not a lot of people mean what they're saying. So it's just it's just funny. Um, thank mm -hmm. you to Brian with the bread, Brian with the beard, for um, linking that article. I know for a fact that this article is just like Screen Rant makes i i've i've tweeted screen rant articles several times in the last year about like who's writing these articles you know um because they just misunderstand star wars and that's not to be like gatekeeping at, at all it's like if you read the actual article and like dissect what they're saying it really is a misunderstood like thing like it's not me like if they say oh I hated The Last Jedi. It's not like I'm going to be like, oh, you don't understand Star Wars. That's not what I'm all about. But what, based on what they wrote here, they clearly misunderstood the use the of those message words. Of yeah. The film. And one thing about this article as I was looking at it from like a writing perspective, ultimately my question became, so why does this matter? And from a writing perspective, you always need to have some sort of line or a focus down at the end of why does all of this matter in the broader scheme of things? And as I read through it, I was like, so why does this matter in the broader scheme of things? If this is your argument, okay, but you need to tell me why is this important? And if your argument is this has, you know, if he had made the argument, okay, but this, because we're focusing so much on the Skywalkers, then we don't get to focus on other families, which he slightly mentions, but mentioning like that. But I was like, but the universe has always been expanded by multiple different stories. We don't just have the movies to tell the stories. Like, like the Mandalorian, we have the Bad Batch, we have the Clone Wars that do expand on characters outside of the Skywalker family that have become fan favorites. So why does this ultimately matter? I'm missing that piece as a reader. Yeah. The writer was chasing his point through paragraph after paragraph, and at the end, he never found it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but also, like, it's so, it's so, of course, it's screen rant. It's so sensational to say The Last Jedi misunderstands it, even if Luke and Snoke say those things and li mean it literally. It's still, it's still the unreliable narrator trope where. Mm -hmm. Luke, that's how Luke views the Skywalker bloodline. He views it as a powerful family family uh, lineage. And Snoke does too. That doesn't mean that the last Jedi is purporting that this is how things are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, additionally, he quotes you know, Luke in The Last Jedi saying, the Force runs strong in my family, which he said in Return of the Jedi to Leia. Yeah. And so... It, it, so that's why I had, I mean, I had a hard time just reading this article because I'm like, A, I don't know what you're talking about. B, it, it, you seem to be mis, like, misunderstanding the whole, like, you've lost the lead. Plus, everything's wrong. <laughs> like, there's not enough. There's there's so many variables that I can't get a grasp of on anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, catching up with the chat. Brian says Mighty Skywalker Blood was sarcastic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Brooke says uh, it had nothing to do with the Force and everything to do with pride and ego. Mm -hmm. um, also, Chris says uh, heir apparent does not imply royalty. It implies succession. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, this is just Tuesday <laughs> or Saturday for us in terms of like, you know, being um sensical i guess being people who understand nuance and uh, who understand dialogue and it's just another day just another toxic um article from screen rant as as um darth man says screen rant is just clickbait now and once a great form but now just trash talk to keep up readership um and i would agree with that but, uh, yeah, there's nothing to worry about here. The, the Last Jedi doesn't misunderstand the bloodline. Uh, the article is just positing that these lines from Snoke and Luke mean that the whole movie is about royalty. 
At least that's what I'm getting. <laughs> um, so I think we can move on from there and go on to the High Republic Phase 2 covers that they are that they released and I know that so what are your thoughts Kiki on the High Republic are you going to try and read the High Republic so I what I need to do is like find out if it's going to be put in an audiobook so maybe I can listen to it as I go for walks or if I drive somewhere but um I haven't read any books since the early 2000s. Ooh. So you, need, yeah. you need to catch up with I need with to catch up. Yes. And the thing is, is that, like, I'm at this place now where I'm like, I... It's kind of like that, like, moment where you're like, I don't know, and I'm almost at the point where I'm afraid to ask level. <laughs> and accepting that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even know where to start, and at this point, I'm too scared to ask where to start. So, yeah. So... Where should I start? <laughs> I will officially like you you've been part of the community already but I will officially welcome you to this community that there is no stupid answers or questions and you know Chaco and I answer these questions on the weekly on the daily what book can I start with all of these things that new fans ask or fans who have been out of the loop and coming back all they they always ask these questions and they're always saying sorry for this question <laughs> you don't apologize for asking these questions we are happy to get people back into star wars and to get people into star wars and if you want to know there are audiobooks yes thank you and you gotta you gotta check out star wars audiobooks because it's not just someone reading you know they do their best to do voices we get musical cues we get sound effects um when you it's like it's like you're watching a movie it, it truly is but you know you're you're actually walking your dog you know like it's 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 great fantastic yeah. and um even chris says um kiki that's the wrong one uh kiki <laughs> i need you to join my Ty Yorick hype train so I know you're not reading the High Republic, and but you mm. will. I'm going to hold you to it. Okay. Like I'm literally going to DM you every Good week, idea. okay, and ask you for your progress. But Ty Yorick is like uh, a Jedi Witcher, and I know you like Witcher. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, I do like the Witcher. <laughs> well, there you go. Toss a coin. Jedi to who, who left the Order. Um, and mm -hmm. is a monster hunter for hire um, and just all around badass. I'm in. <laughs> and you can actually start out with her too because it is a prequel story. So if you if you get Monster of Temple Peak, High Republic, the comic, it's four issues. Okay. And you can read about Tyoric, get your start there. Um, but Perfect. This is where the meme comes from, from Chris and from everyone else who follows High Republic. Toss a coin or toss a credit to Ty Yorick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't <laughs> wait until you, you, you get into it. I, I have a feeling Ty Yorick will be your favorite. Okay. You're going to just have like this blitz of like TikToks about it. I'm, I'm, I'm dying for it. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> I'm expecting it. Um, Loden says, I know the Fallen Star is going to hurt. So, like, with like, we're going to try to to speak in abstracts here to keep spoilers from Kiki. But like this, <laughs> this cover obviously reveals a lot for the story moving forward in the High Republic. And it's it, such a beautiful cover. It is. <laughs> and it confirms our worst fears what we have been speculating since they announced the phase two titles fallen star and we're like is that is it like the fall of a person or is it the fall of the starlight beacon and we see in this cover that they were not afraid to reveal this <laughs> <laughs> and I have to I have to like check again with Chaco. Like what was the bet that we set? Who was going to survive? No, we didn't end up placing a bet. Um 
we we couldn't we couldn't fully agree on the terms of it, it was it was the order of w with which people were going to die um and kiki if you can't tell by how we we're saying things this this era doesn't take prisoners like it's so it's very crony but 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 it, but it's you know hopeful and there's no incest <laughs> <laughs> but if you like to cry this okay oh, yeah um it's just a story it's the the story itself starting from light of the jedi which is where you should start um if you're mm -hmm. if you no you can read monster of temple peak the comic yes. the four issue comic that's fine but realistically the story starts in light of the jedi and you will find soon very quickly that it's not a good idea to get attached to anyone uh -oh. <laughs> so yeah that's that's the only uh, caveat that i will throw your way as you uh take your first steps into the high republic era okay but uh camilla Bariqua wuki is sending you another mm -hmm. audiobook recommendation battlefront 2 inferno squadron battlefront 2 and oh, and fellow uh, Pacific Northwesterner um, Haley recommends Lost Stars. We all recommend Lost Stars. Every, yeah. Lost Stars. Everyone needs to read Lost Stars. All right. <laughs> um, hold on. The Soda Man. What's up, Soda Man? Welcome. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The Jedi are the ones to destroy Starlight Beacon out of necessity. Interesting take. I mean, we can't go into details. We're trying to remain spoiler free, but I never really thought about that. But they are watching it as if they're like, yeah, this is what's happening, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it kind of makes sense. Uh, what do you think, Jocko? Ooh. Um, no, I could, I could see that. I could see that happening if I mean, a similar thing happened. Uh, okay, so, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, where where is the the um, mother or father of the Dringir being held currently? On the Starlight Beacon. That's my point. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, makes sense now. Uh, Soda Man loved Inferno Squad. Uh, and she, and he also recommends Master and Apprentice too. We'll keep it. We'll keep your list kind of thin <laughs> for now. I will again. I will keep up with you and DM you and uh, check for your progress each week. Um, Sounds good. Like uh, I will be held accountable if I don't keep up. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, Xanatos says, when I first heard of Starlight Beacon, Light of the Jedi, I thought, oh yeah, that's getting destroyed. I mean, of course. I mean, before Light of the Jedi happened, I was reading Star Wars 2020, and when <laughs> when Leia was talking about Operation Starlight, she's like, there used to be. I was like, <laughs> 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 so you talk about something that used to be? Yeah. <laughs> that past tense. Exactly. And then we have this this beanie for light and life. Man, I wish I could, I wish I could pull off beanies, but I recommend it for Kiki. Okay. Yeah, it's a cute beanie. I'm guessing there is a huge amount of significance in that line that I will learn about as I'm reading. Yes. Absolutely. It is I mean, <laughs> you you might see me wearing it, but hey, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, and of course, this is the cover that we had already seen for the past couple months. This is the poster, Who Will Survive? Did you get your package, Choco? No? I did not get one. Ouch. No love. I'm pretty sure it, I'm pretty sure it's on its way. Right? Didn't you didn't you move? Like didn't you have to like update that? I moved and I did update it, but um I had to update it at least twice, so We'll see. You never I'm, know. I'm pretty sure it's on its way. Um, and then we have this um, Walmart exclusive variant from uh, Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older, which I'm a huge fan of because I like 
I like Mickeyans, and I like Zine, and I, and I love knowing that, like, she's not a Jedi. Oh, spoiler alert. But she is Force-sensitive, so there's a lot of, like, these, like, viewpoints that is... that exists in the High Republic that is being flushed out. Yeah. Um... But I want to see the other variants from other stores, because that's just the Walmart variant. And I don't know, does anybody in chat, if you can confirm which... Oh, okay, so the Barnes & Noble variant is going to have this fold-out poster and the Who Will Survive poster. Um, but this cover variant right here, is this the Barnes & Noble one? No, it's a company called Out of Print. It's going to be 50 bucks, and that's the cover, and it comes with a beanie. Oh. And pre-orders for it open on Monday. Interesting. 50 bucks. That's like... That's like a $20 book and a $30 beanie. <laughs> but I'm down with it, you know... I got it has this is this it comes with this poster right as well as the cover I I don't know I don't know if it's <laughs> <laughs> that came out of nowhere um, I don't know if it's the cover and and um, a poster but if it is then that's definitely worth it um, but I, I I'm I'm gonna try to order it because I'm gonna I gotta be honest they've a, they've already given me more than that money's worth of content alone, um, yes. like in, in my enjoyment. But they've also like physically given me more than that money's worth of content. That is true. That is true. You gotta give back, <laughs> you know. Um, let's see here. I'm imagining Starlight Beacon will fall like Watchtower during the Thanagarian invasion. Yeah. Definitely Justice League season two, right? Um, that went over my head just as much, Kiki. I don't know if you're. I'm not unfamiliar with that <laughs> as well. <laughs> no. It's it's uh, Justice League, the animated cartoon that followed that came after Batman the animated series and Superman the animated series. Uh, the Thanagarians came in. Yeah, I believe it. I want to say that was season two, and that's what ushered in Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, I think Anyways. I, I kind of I kind of <laughs> just heard all calculus right there. I don't have no idea. <laughs> I understood Superman and Batman. Yeah, I understood Justice League, Superman, Batman. <laughs> okay. Three. So it's okay if I say you're not a DC guy. <laughs> yeah, it is okay. I mean, I'll watch the DC movies <laughs> and like what they have, the shows and stuff. Like I was, I, I was a big fan of the Arrowverse, but as far no. as what I know in DC, nah. I don't, I don't really know. I know you gotta, that you gotta watch Young Justice. I'm I'm st okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, just Young Justice because it's it's separate. It's like in its own universe, so you can watch just that show, and you don't need any tie-ins to anything else. Is that the so HBO Max? Yes. Okay. So my homework is the High Republic. Your homework is DC. Absolutely. <laughs> um. And my oh. homework is I have a lot of comics to catch up on. <laughs> and just Star in Wars general. Well. Yeah. Uh, Kenny, Darthman86 says, going back to work now. Still have you guys in my ear. Have fun on the podcast, Kiki. I mean, he he's saying yeah. Nikki. I'm, I believe that's autocorrect. Kiki, so. yes. Kiki's the word I go by. <laughs> um, that poster is AKA Who Lives, Who Dies, Who Tells Your Story. It's just there's a lot of feelings that we're catching from these this poster and variant cover reveals. I, just to, to play like the way they play with light in that poster is just beautiful to me. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah from an artistic standpoint, it's gorgeously done. It's just everything is they kind of like the sun, the fire, and the light. Everything that kind of like is a light source is emphasized. And it's focused in one area of the painting. It catches your eye and draws you straight toward the explosion. Yeah, and then the, the blue lightsaber, that the little touch of blue 
balances out you know the explosion but it's also the sunset you really get you, you really understand that this is the end of an era which is exactly what it's meant to depict yeah uh camilla is with you we're with you chaco justice league animated series equals goat <laughs> so there are people who have seen this except other than you chaco <laughs> <laughs> uh loading great storm says young justice is incredible um and soda man says bookmarked i don't know if he's talking about uh young justice but i mean i'll definitely commit to some homework i'm still i'm still trying to finish um lesser evil um and i'm trying to finish um the donny kate's venom still mm. um but man, there's just some man. I'll do it. I'll do it. I can't. I can't continue to make excuses. <laughs> no. no uh, well, my thing is like you can grab one or two things from each medium. As long as it's not the same medium, you can have a much longer list. But like, you know, I, I have comics I'm catching up on, and then shows and stuff, and they're so it's separate. Yeah. I see. The thing is, I'm like. So I'm, I'm lucky that the foundation just just ended their season last week, but then like Wheel of Time is out now, mm -hmm. and I'm keeping up with that every week. Witcher season two is about to come out. Yes. <laughs> My TikTok is about to be a mess. Yeah, as well it should be. <laughs> as like, always. I, I I, I feel bad because like it shifts like we'll have like dead serious conversations like and that is why Din Djarin is a good example of non-toxic masculinity the next post is me like doing a thirst trap of someone dressed as like Bane from the Dark Knight <laughs> it's, like, they, it's all over the place and like once the Witcher hits it's game over for everybody you're all gonna be on a wild trip with me I mean you're gonna be <laughs> on a trip with uh, our very own B Dazzler when Book of Boba Fett hits too mm. yeah I, but by the way, I just I recently made a, a movie poster because I've I've been thinking this whole time something you've been saying is that I mean to me Din Djarin is Forrest Gump of Star Wars. He's just Forrest Gump in space, like he's just a regular dude trying to like do stuff and like somehow gets roped into every major conflict and meets every major person and somehow has influenced every <laughs> everything in the Star Wars universe and still has no idea. Yeah. He doesn't realize that he's in Star Wars and then he's figuring it out and he doesn't want to be in Star Wars anymore. And he's like, all right, I'm going to stop being the main character. And he does something simple, like I'm just going to go buy a thing of soup. And he ends up on a boat and ends up meeting a bunch of Mandalorians. Like he cannot do anything simple. <laughs> Do you think that? With, do you think that with the loss of the Razor Crest, he has to run? Everyone? He has to run. Oh my word! No, somebody like somebody like there was a couple of people who stitched some of my videos. He made some really hilarious like videos about what season three was going to be, and somebody said something like. Okay, I guess it's pretty simple. I just have to go get your laundry. And then it's like the cut to is like Din Djarin fighting on the third Death Star for his life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, but like literally he he adopted a kid and tried to take him back to his family and he ended up becoming the, the ruler of Mandalore on accident. Like there's no way for him to do anything simple. Ever. That is true. Um, you know, glorious purpose is thrust he's he's the he is the um the character that is like you're either born with greatness or have greatness thrust upon you and greatness has been thrust upon him he's like too greatness, much greatness has been slammed across his face yeah. like Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't oh. want greatness <laughs> um so i will I'm, say oh, yes go ahead Oh, I was just going to say, like, and, you know, for Din Djarin, I think that's what makes him so identifiable, though, because if you think about who all of us are, Din Djarin essentially is a freelancer who's barely making ends meet. And then he's given a huge amount of responsibility and he's just trying to keep it together. And I think that's something that we can all identify with on some level, especially if you're a younger person. Like, I don't have it figured out. I'm just trying to keep this nonsense together. I'm just trying to get home to my job and not burn down the house when I cook dinner. Like the only the only difference is it would be like okay man i'm out of cat food 
and then I go to get cat food, and all of a sudden I'm in like a Google. Into the US? I'm in the Google data center, like stopping a breach, and I'm like, I don't even. Oh, I'm so tired, man. I'm, I'm so far from my car. And then I became the president of the United States, and they woke me up, being like, "We got problems." And you're just like, yeah. It's like it's a comedian. Like... I remember a comedian said that, like waking up problems. <laughs> what would what, what would you like to do with this entire kingdom? I'm just trying to plug the holes in my in my hull. Just give me a second, <laughs> would you? Um, and Soda Man says, "I'd love to see Din with the Mos Espa Ping Pong Champion Championship." <laughs> <laughs> um, X Core was invested before it even came out. Um, but yeah, it's um, these covers have revealed much and we have a lot to look forward to and um i'm sure once book of boba fett releases we will be seeing brooke kiki who else is who else who else simps for boba fett in the community everyone right yeah and i think it's gonna create more because i it's really i really should sit down like track like the amount of thirst traps that i'm seeing rise because i feel like the minute we hit the book of boba fett the thirst traps are going to go through the roof yes just like tracking yeah are we going to count how many times you bite your lips when book of boba fett drops (laughs) (laughs) maybe it's funny because like I do the reactions to the thirst traps and every every time I'm always surprised and even myself I'm like now why did this surprise you <laughs> like what about this entire video did you think was going to be different I'm like I don't know why I thought things were going to be different but it did shock me yeah <laughs> um so let's move on to Ivana Sokno we got some casting news with Ahsoka and we got it in like on, on, on Tuesday, I believe. I'm not quite sure when it was in, it was on Tuesday, November 29th. Is this, um, yeah, we got this on Monday and we didn't get really have much of a chance to kind of discuss this, uh, on TikTok. I didn't, well, at least I didn't get, see a lot of TikToks, uh, made about it. Um, but Ivana Sakno has been cast opposite Rosario Dawson in Ahsoka the TV she, uh, series in an undisclosed role. So, chat, um, Kiki, Chaco, let us know your predictions now as to who this person might be playing. Now, well, before you start, I just want to get it out of the way. I think, I think. <laughs> The, the high cheekbones scream chess to me. And a lot of people will say that Arlani is too old. She's older than Thrawn. But I'm telling you right now, alien races, chiss, doesn't matter. She can look she can look as young as she wants and be at, older than Thrawn. That's, yeah. how, that's how I'm seeing chiss. So, yeah. What are you guys' thoughts? I like that answer. I went and uh, read the entire Wikipedia page about Ahsoka, Ahsoka Tano just to make sure that I kind of understood the entire journey after the Clone Wars and even into Rebels. And like one name that I came up with, and I'm going to slaughter it, Hedala Fardi. Oh, that is the name. I, That's a name time to drop. Wise, time wise, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Adala was like yeah. five or six girl. when around season seven of Clone Wars. I mean, like just post after that, the year after that. Mm-hmm. I mean, she interesting. Would be, she would be like early thirties, right? Early thirties or so. Yeah, it would. It would make, and she's a Force user, so it would make sense that maybe at some point they meet up again. I like That'd that. Be interesting. A lot. I like that a lot, actually. I, I would. I, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who did you say it was, Chaco? Did you say anyone? Um, no, I did not say anyone. But there's a few options. I, I, I still think. I mean, I, I do think that. Um, the age wouldn't 
might be prohibitive between being, you know, my favorite you know, admiral step on me. <laughs> um, but I, it wouldn't be that way for, um, and why is the name escaping me? So there was a Atreus who was a, who retained skywalking abilities that was with Eli Vanto in, um, in the third of the Thrawn books name was I want to say Yolena but that's not it it's something <laughs> like that <laughs> um but uh, yeah I don't know there's there's a lot of possibilities I mean also them saying it, it was opposite um Ahsoka uh the the other thing is if, if they went with just an all new character I would also be be happy about that that's true yeah absolutely but I you know it's fun this stuff yeah. is fun to speculate upon. I mean, like hearing about Hadala Farty, it was like, she's the <laughs> right age almost. Vanya. Um, yes, Vanya Malik. Thank you. Um, but I also think she's a really great fit for Aralani as well. And I know that Aralani is older than Thrawn and, and, and not, she's pretty far from 24. But again, they're Chiss, right? And as Matt Martin says in on Twitter, Chiss, uh, when they were writing Chiss, they, they wanted to make them more unique as aliens and less blue humans. And that's why they don't, mm. that's why they don't um, grow facial hair. And that's why they don't like particularly age the same way. So she could be Aralani, like the high cheekbones. But then, of course, like Kenny says, the high cheekbones also screams Hera from Rebels. Um, what do you think, Chaka? The possibility of a Hera. Hera, I don't, um, I don't quite see it, but I, I wouldn't be opposed. I, 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 I kind of do see it. Like, I know. How old would Hera be by then? So she's like, what, late 20s by the end of Rebels? Right. So this is about. The end of Rebels. Right is like five ABY. Right. And then a couple of years, and then she would be like in her early 30s, I think. Right, Chaco? Uh, yeah, yeah, we always forget. It's easy to forget, but um, she's like 24 or 25 in Rebels. She just has the mom energy, so we always assume. <laughs> yeah. So she would be in her early 30s. So the age is, is okay. There's not much of a discrepancy. Um... Yeah. But we could see Hera. I mean, with with Sabine cast, you mm -hmm. know, and if they come out and say Mena Masood is Ezra, and then they say Lars is Thrawn, then we could, for sure, kind of speculate that Hera has a, has a moment in there as well. We could see mm -hmm. Chopper. We could see Zeb. Okay. Oh, There's a lot if of. They people. bring that little. If they bring the murder bot, it's gonna. Everyone's gonna lose it. <laughs> <laughs> that like it won't be it won't be Ahsoka Tano's show anymore. It's gonna be the chopper. That's show. true. Yeah. There'll be no more attention to Rosario Dawson's character. It's game over. That I mean, for the, the longest time, for the longest time, Rogue One was they said General Syndulla over the comms, and there's Chopper in the base. For the longest time, that's all people could talk about. Oh, and the presence <laughs> of the ghost during like the the action shot. Over scary. Yeah. So, I'm just picturing at some point in time, like Ahsoka's interrogating someone, and, and they won't speak, and she's like, "Well, okay, we'll we'll let them go." And then all of a sudden, they get shot, and it's just Chopper in the background with their rifle, and he's like, <laughs> burp, 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 and you're like, burp, 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 the hell? Burp, burp. And like <laughs> Sorry, bro. So, Is anyways, it? I start blasting them. <laughs> that little no, I I made a post like way back in the day and i was just like you know what they really should have done to get rid of darth vader was to send in chopper like that little robot would have figured it out i don't know how yeah. he would have done it but he would have taken down like darth vader that's Easily. what chopper does he figures things out he does um but call me call me selfish Chaco. but i do want an ahsoka interrogation scene but i want her i want her rosaria's version of you know, I could take whatever I want. 
<laughs> That's long. Yeah. Um, just made it a little bit uncomfortable. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how to. I don't know how to move forward from that one. Well, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> this is this is how we do things on Dyad. I make some incredibly cringe lines, and then we move forward from there and leave Chaco to think about it because. That's what he does. He that's, thinks about that's things. what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Soda Matt says, unrelated, you can buy Chopper at Batu Droid Depot now. Really? I would just wish yeah, I've been at Batu once. We really need to go. We'll get there. Uh, Element Seven and I will be hanging out for the first time in real life this uh, this coming Monday. So excited. Yeah. Finally, finally, we won't be able to say, man, everybody's meeting except for us. And we're the closest, I think. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm close to, I'm close to, so Camilla is in LA. Um, St. Pat is in LA. There's a lot of people in LA that I haven't met yet. But like, it always made sense that the dyad should meet at least. But, you know, for those of you that are out of state, San Diego's a day trip. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. People forget it's a this this is just big ass state. Um. <laughs> it's really funny to talk to people from the East Coast who are like, oh, like when I was living in California, they'd be like, oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna be in this city, and I'm like, uh huh. How does that have anything to do with me? <laughs> <laughs> Visiting this city once again. How does this have anything to do with me whatsoever? Can't you just drive? No. no. Yeah. No. My my uh, my happened to my mom we were living in Huntington Beach and her friend was flying in and changed her plans at the last minute and was like yeah I flew into um, Van Nuys because it was like $20 cheaper and we're like what (laughs) you can't do that so you just turn my 20 minute drive to the airport into a three hour trip to the airport because it saved you 20 bucks. Thanks. Thanks. Good yeah. friends. It's yeah. like um, when they say, oh, you, you, you're you in L.A., aren't you? It's like, yeah, I'll be I'll be in San Francisco. Like, yeah, like literally. That's like, that's that's like 400 miles. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, how the, the biggest the biggest mix up that, that they do is you're in San Diego. I'll be flying into San Jose. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> They're both like sand. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Not nearby, no. There's a NorCal, SoCal. There's a Central Valley. Oh, Come on yeah. now. Uh, Bariqua Wookie or Camilla says, 10 out of 10 would recommend hanging out with your diet on the regular. Again, you know, if it wasn't, <laughs> if, if it wasn't a day trip away, I think it would be easy to kind of just, you know, hang out every weekend. I mean, we do remotely, but still. Uh, Soda Man says, I live in uh, Philly. When you guys are here, I'll treat you to cheesesteaks. I would love that. Oh, nice. We're putting that uh, one down. Yeah, I was going to say uh, Malik is also in Philly. Uh, so, yeah, y'all, y'all better grab some cheesesteaks. Well, then, well, there you go. Malik and Soda Man, you guys can connect and hang out as well um, and further make us look a fool for not meeting. And I don't know if I shouted it out earlier, but Malik was our fearless leader in the uh, tabletop RPG. Um, awesome dude. Follow him. And he has a podcast called Ha! It's a podcast. And uh, it's it's hilarious um, and unhinged and raunchy. Uh, check it out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, Hera, thank you for tuning in. Uh, welcome to the show. There are a lot of creators across the board. I learned that several creators lived in Washington State. Yeah. Like Kiki. But there you go. Coffee and apples, gang, gang, bitches. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Harith, does Harith live in Washington State? I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Um,. Oh Lots of people. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like you inhale. Do you know uh, Corellia Coffee Works on TikTok? What was the name again? Corellia Coffee Works. Let's see, I follow so many folks. How do I spell that? 
yep if you don't follow uh, her already please do and awesome um she ha- has been doing Asajj Ventress cosplay and uh what was the how do I spell that sorry C-O-R-E-L-L-I-A and then C-O-F-F-E-E W-R-W-O-R-K-S she's in the chat aha uh-huh. Haley she's oh, also PMW oh. okay I am not following now I am Corellia Coffee Works look at that Dying the force making friends <laughs> matching people um i don't think anyone will ever come to kansas city missouri we'll see you know it's uh it's a it's a big world missouri can have some cons right i mean it yeah. all depends on like what comes out of diet and the force what comes out of like everyone's being content creators you know, mm-hmm. I feel like the bigger we get, the more we do panels at Cele- Star Wars Celebration as like honored guests. If you're watching, Lucasfilm. Um, yeah, at some point in time, you know, if, if we get to be big time content creators, we'll be flying you all out to us to chill in our studio. And uh, yeah, I'll do some cool stuff. That is the dream. So if you so so if you have ever been invited on Diet in the Forest, Kiki, this is your first time. Mm-hmm. Um, you are known as series regulars, and you are known as family in Diet in the Forest. And um, yeah, uh, like that in the dream. <laughs> in that in in when our when dream. you make it big, make sure that I've just got like a little room at like the beach house reserved for me. <laughs> It's going to have the picture hey. of the Asian doing the <laughs> what? Doing, what? The, doing the thirst trap. Uh, <laughs> the man was doing the thirst trap and he was pulling the lightsaber out of his uh, his pants. Yeah. I had a moment because I almost didn't do a, la- a react for thirstiness. I almost reacted and just was like, I, I don't want to like destroy anything, sir. But like, I don't know if that's where you want the lightsaber. Like, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life or how to do anything. I'm just saying. But I I went with the I'm going to hell joke instead. So, yes, I had to make a call. That joke landed. Thank you. (laughs) But yeah, in our dream of like the studio, our guests, like in in the world that's no longer dominated by a deadly virus, Mm. we would have guests come and you know make an appearance in person and that means we would fly people out that is the dream that we would fly people to the studio to speak in person so that we would bridge the remote gap uh bridge the latency of remote um calls yes um i am down to come back down to southern california anytime so uh yeah and let us know whenever you're down here as well yeah yeah and xanato says if anyone lives in florida first i'm sorry second, <laughs> <laughs> second i'm here <laughs> um and we know a good friend of the channel uh sawyer sawyerism is in florida um i feel like there were a bunch of people in florida and then i think they've kind of disappeared but um <laughs> Um, I, I just know a lot of people are in Florida. It's a very popular state to be a Star Wars fan, to be a Disney fan. Um, St. Pat's is just hoping to be big enough to come on to podcasts. Looks so fun. Um, uh, St. Pat, I'm just waiting for a topic that's worthy of you. Right. I would love to, I mean, we, we need to talk history. Um, so, yeah, if Chris is in the chat as well i know he's a history buff uh we can do some some history and history comparisons within star wars if, if you're game for it yeah saint pat is an egyptologist isn't he uh, saint pat is a g <laughs> yes yes um but but as my dyad says diet in the force is heavily reliant on time sensitive material in the the news cycle so 
I mean, Pat, if you are excited about anything that is announced and want to come on to Dyad, don't I mean, feel free to uh, DM me and, and let me know if you want to appear. Um, I also have, um, well, no, I have to give you that invite. Um, never mind. Moving on from that uh, <laughs> thought. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you decide to let your, um, let your interests be known in that new cycle, in that particular week, I can give you a link so that you can schedule your, your appearance on, on diet. This is something that's new that I'm implementing. So, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't worry about it if you feel like you've missed out on that. Um, but yeah, if anybody else in the future wants to be on Dyad, don't feel free to, to message me. You know, it's not like an exclusive club or anything. Um, but um, yeah, I think we're done with uh, Ivana Sokno. I think that, I mean, I, I, I love Aralani. I love um, the possibility of Hera. I love that you just brought up Hadala Farty. I think that is a name that just was not in the spectrum of what we could think about, but now that you think about it, it fits. Um, yeah, Ward uh, Lafferty just pointed out in the chat that Hadala Farty was four in the Ahsoka novel, mm -hmm. and so it, she would be 31 at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, another Kiki fan, Julie Christine. I don't know if you know Julie Christine. You should follow Julie Christine 77 on TikTok as well. Um, but apparently she knows you. You're big. <laughs> You're pretty big. I'm not that big. I mean, I did see <laughs> your, I did see your video. Like you were, you were, um, You're dominating my FYP. That's for damn Yes. Sure. <laughs> Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. But I also did see okay. your photo, your video, like, um, stomping on somebody for being like, your follower count is, is pretty low. And then you were like, this is my real follower count. And you're like, Bitch. yeah, he was on my backup. And he's like, your follower count's really low. And it was like 4,000 at the time on there. And then I was like, okay, here's the main account. Like, just like, <laughs> why? Yeah. I think up in the Sri Lanka. I don't know why. That. I was just, I was just like, why, why are you trying to like, why, why are we doing this right now? Um, so it's I always the Abby account. Sorry, it's always the faceless Abby accounts or the accounts with you know only like ten followers that have the most to say. It really is. I mean, they're usually not even like content creators either. They have nothing. <laughs> They're private. They don't even have in, like a profile picture. Nope. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, but we are almost out of time and I forgot to announce that we are in fact in our open forum segment. So if you guys in the chat have anything to talk about or if Kiki, you have anything you want to discuss, feel free to bring it up. Um, Julia says, I was so worried Kiki was gone, but then I saw her new account and was relieved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I ran away for a while from TikTok because I was tired. It's like, let me go do some other stuff in the real world. And then it's like, I miss TikTok and the nonsense. <laughs> I miss being thirsty publicly for Boba Fett and <laughs> hoping, hoping like my family or my job never finds out about me sitting here reacting to thirst traps of like Din Djarin. We'd love to see it, though. <laughs> I mean, I've had a couple of people in real life tell me they're like, "I found your account," and I'm like, "Which video did you watch?" <laughs> oh, I watched your discussion of like Bane from The Dark Knight Rises, and I'm like, "Oh, thank God, <laughs> you didn't see the one about Din Djarin, who?" Okay, thank God. Like, <laughs> it's there, though. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> they're gonna find it. <laughs> Which is why I don't use my name. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, Although I, I my use name has come up before, <laughs> I use part of my name. Um, that's why when I was like form the the strongest team, and I did like the first letters of my name, and people were like, "Man, that's cheating." It's like, wait until you see the other three letters. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Harris says, I personally just feel weird asking other creators to be on podcasts. Like I'm announcing myself that I'm coming to a friend's house. Um, no, I kind of feel like that, but, but the star Wars TikTok community is different. We don't got friends. 
got we got family. family. Yay. <laughs> Um, we love we love to quote uh, fa- Fast and Furious here. <laughs> Thank you for your. I was like, oh, I gotta set this up so hard, and hopefully everyone joins in and, and Pep didn't. So I always feel it's like okay. the Star Wars. I always feel like Star Wars. <laughs> I always feel like the Star Wars community is kind of like we've all got like our own family unit. So like people that we're connected to maybe are kind of like our quote inner circle friends, and then we've got like our extended family. And a lot of the problems come when the family unit interacts with the extended cousins or uncles that we've heard of. And we're just like, no, nope, we, we, mm, 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 mm. we, we had one interaction and we're back to it with the family unit where we're safe. But then people like try to come for the Star Wars fandom and then the entire Star Wars fandom is like, nah, we're family. <laughs> when that political guy was like if you don't know who this is you don't know star wars and everyone and their, and their grandma was like hold up like people who didn't even make star wars stuff anymore came out of retirement and they're like let me let me end this man's career real quick like, oh is that the one that was like revan if you don't know revan yeah yeah i think that's like you one of my most so my most popular like uh <laughs> stitches I think that almost yeah. got a million views. Oh my God. And all I said was like, you're good. You don't need to know who this <laughs> is. <laughs> all right. Um, so Star Wars lawyer says, Chaco, how do you feel about the possibility about Cyana Ree being Finn's mom? What, what, do you, what do you think? I know he asked me, but I'm curious. Yeah, that's why I'm think. waiting, because he asked you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like sitting here like, well, what do you think? <laughs> I, I, I commented on this on my live earlier before you had joined. So he knows. I, I think it does chronologically make sense. And it fits. Although I don't know what she is up to if she's out of prison at this time. Like, to actually do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the timeline fits. And after the war, there was a lot of people who ended up in, you know, what's called Traitor's Remorse. Um, and it is, it's certainly a possibility. I, I don't, I don't, I don't even have, it's too new for me to have full feelings on. Part of me is like, nah, because I don't believe he's, he's mixed and I don't want her to be with anyone other than Thane. So... <laughs> Wow, is that like a pure? Is that like a purist stance? Uh, I. No, it's just like I, I. I want this pairing to happen, and so I have trouble seeing any others. Um, uh, so that's, that's it. What if it was Cyan and Thane? And Thane is his father. I know it, it doesn't really work like that, but it's not impossible. Um, no, it's not. But... It's just you know. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see here. How are you enjoying Wheel of Time? I am absolutely loving Wheel of Time. It's actually like I'm on the brink of trying to read the books because I never read Wheel of Time and the lore in it sounds absolutely deep and mesmerizing. Uh, I was not aware of this book series, but now that I now that I've gotten a taste of it, I want more. Um, Kiki, are you watching Wheel of Time? Do you know about it? I know about it, and I need to. I need to sit down and watch it. It's on my list. Yeah, it it, it seems like one of those like esoteric, like fiction <laughs> titles that like, like I'm a I, I'm Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. I'm like all of that stuff, Game right. of Thrones, but I have never I had never heard of Wheel of Time. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. So I was like, I have no no comprehension of what I'm walking into but I mean I did that earlier this year with Dune yeah. um, three, like a month ago I was like I have no context for this like movie from the 80s but let's do this so I'm 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 down with walking into things that I have no context for yeah um, X-Core says don't expect it to be close at all to the show so what I'm gonna do X-Core is I'm, I'm actually just gonna finish the show and then start reading the books but I'm not like a I'm not a a book purist, so like a book a book purist would be like this the this is what happens in the book 
happened, this is what should have yeah. happened on the show. Like, these are adaptations, right? So mm-hmm. I'm okay with reading the book and being like, oh, so this is what happens in the book. Okay. So yeah. it's different. That's all. Yeah, I and I, I agree. I'm, I'm not a book purist, but at, at the same time, I do know that a book can um, add different, um, like, assumptions, you know, into mm-hmm. your brain that may or may not mm-hmm. come true. So I prefer to also watch the show first, then jump into the books, because typically the books just have a lot more depth because it's a book, right? It's hour. You're spending hours of time um, in this world versus like the length of a TV show. So yeah, yeah I think that's mm-hmm. adds to the, it makes the best enjoyment. Yeah. Um. Open forum, what canon info do we have on the CIS government? I'm trying to map something out. It's just the Senate, Dooku, and the Council. Um, uh, the Separatist Council, the Senate, and Dooku. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much I mean, the, how the leadership functions. We don't get to spend a lot of time with them, but... You know, and that the heroes on both sides arc, we get to see what the the Senate looks like, and we see Anakin wreck the council. <laughs> uh, then we have you know Grievous running around doing stuff, but yeah. Um. Does the does the does the banking clan have? Would the banking clan they're, be, or are they just they're just neutral? They're part right? of the council. Oh. No, uh, no, they're they're in bed with the separatists for sure, but they yeah. do try to like maintain a face of neutrality, even though they they aren't. <laughs> they're neutral. They're not involved. Um, oh, there's no way they could fit everything from the book into the show. The soul and the spine of the world are still there. Well, I mean, that, that's that's at least what I would hope for any adaptation is to kind of keep the soul mm-hmm. and the the backbone of of any type of like story that has a huge world but you know it's always great to be aware of like you know this is what happened in the book this is what happened in the book and so like i i never understood like the the purists that see a harry potter show or a harry potter movie and say but that's not what happened in the book it's like okay but this is what's happening in the movie <laughs> it did happen in the book it, it always makes me chuckle when people are like, but in the book, and I'm like, yeah, word. Sure. But like you said, if we're talking about the movie or if we're talking about the TV show, that's the center focus. You have to, like, when you adapt something from a written medium into a medium that's being viewed, things have to change. You cannot just copy paste. Yeah. But also, unless you want, like, a 20-hour movie. <laughs> Which I know for a fact y'all ain't gonna sit through because I saw how you complained about Dune. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not about to happen. You I mean, Zack Snyder's Justice League was endless. <laughs> you know, you know the movie Chaos Walking with Daisy Ridley and Tom Holland? Yeah. That's exactly what a book movie would be if it was copy and paste. Because they just walked around wearing their exposition on their shoulders, just like... <laughs> True. That's the type of thing you would be hearing in a book that was a copy and paste movie, like, because the book yeah. has those inner that the, that inner dialogue, the, the exposition and prose that you wouldn't normally hear. You'd have to see it in their yeah. actions. But like Chaos Walking, as I was, I was watching it, is like, I wonder if she, I wonder if she knows that I'm looking at her. I'm like, is this book exposition <laughs> I'm hearing? <laughs> so it was funny. Well, yeah. Like in a book, they have to explain to you, like Lord of the Rings, I have to explain to you how this looks so you have an understanding of where they are and the broader purpose of them being here. The movie, we literally need this to be a good looking forest. Yeah. They understand the concept of forest. Next issue. Like <laughs> Are you talking yeah. about are you talking about the Markwood? I'm talking about Fagorn Forest. Fangorn? Okay. Fangorn, 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 yeah, Fangorn, I thought, folks. I thought Fangorn. you were a fan of the Woodland Realm. That's okay. I am. I am a fan of the Woodland Realm of Mark Wedd, but. But? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I can have other interests. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Chaco, you're you're lost. I have no idea what's going on. 
That's and I'm okay with that. So when he says Legolas of the Woodland Realm, he, he's from Mirkwood? Oh, gotcha. Yes, gotcha. Um, I watched Lord of the Rings for the first time a year ago now, I Ooh. believe. Yeah. Well, it's never too late to watch them. He's in the middle. So, Chaco, I also, before we uh, before we run out of time, um, have to confirm with you, next Friday is the next Harry Potter movie? Um, December 10th. I, I mean, my, my Friday evenings belong to my wife, and so I have a hard time confirming or denying anything. But, <laughs> so what would be best go for ahead, you, Go then? ahead and put it on... Go ahead and put it. It's not. It doesn't matter what's best for me. <laughs> what are you <laughs> that's talking the, about? That's I'm not the gonna, point. I'm not going to schedule over point. your own schedule. N- no. Go ahead and put it on the books. Um, Send a Google a Google yeah. Calendar date. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will. I guess I will schedule it. And Kiki, you're invited as well. Um, Chaco, Ooh. this is his first time seeing Harry Potter, as well. Oh, really? Yes. Are you going to watch the first film? He watched We're on the number first, three. Yeah. Are you gonna watch the third one? Okay. Right. Gob- goblet. No, prisoner. Prisoner. Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, if you're not already in the Discord, you can join the Discord. Um, I will send you an invite. Um, and we hold his, the watch alongs with Chaco uh in there. And you're welcome to join us and hang out. Yes. But of course, uh, I, I feel like a lot of our watch alongs is Chuck Chaco's first times. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. Well, we, we had a big watch along for, uh, I guess, I guess that was prior to the channel being a, a specific channel, though. But, you know, when we did the People vs. George Lucas, um, also, I should be getting here soon, but I, I just picked up all of the... Um, the original DVDs for the oh. prequels. So you remember the, these original widescreen DVDs also mm-hmm. had the like uh, director's commentary and stuff like that. There's a lot of interesting nuggets. So I would love to watch through the prequels with director's commentary with uh, with the people. So if they're interested, what do you guys think? Here you go. That'd be interesting. We need a. Uh, Harris says we need a good element first time. I don't know, man. Elmo's been everywhere, man. He's he's seen everything. Everything's I, old hat. I, I've tried. I mean, I've tried. I literally have tried to see everything, but there are some things I haven't seen. But in terms of like, like Justice League, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of pop culture, like the usual, you know, fantasy stuff, I've seen it. Like Wheel of Time, uh, that was a huge. That's a huge kind of like unique thing yeah. that I missed. I'm gonna give that a shot tonight, but have you Yeah, what is it? I mean we could go we could go back old school. Like the last unicorn. You seen that? I've seen that, yeah. I've seen oh, that. okay. I've okay. seen I've seen Land Before Time like when you when you started talking about Tree Star, I didn't even hear the music before <laughs> before I knew what it was. Like as soon as you said Tree Star I was like yup 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 you know <laughs> That's a, that's uh, yeah. a deep cut. Actually, you when you said that that was sad, I thought of what happened to that girl, Ducky's oh live God. action Lord. actor. Mm. That's it's the saddest horrific, thing. Horrific what happened to her. Just like sorry, now I want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just it's it, for anyone who's going to go look it up, you have been pre-warned that it is a very sad story of what happened to her. Her father was abusive and murdered her mother and her so be very careful going to look that up if you're not ready for it yeah yeah her, her gravestone says yup 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 on it yeah there's that though i feel like th- i feel like that's a great like send off mm. I, 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 without the murder maybe um, no of course not wow yeah it was good. Sorry, Y'all trying like to make me there. look like a fool. No, <laughs> no, no, that's that's not what I meant. But um, to to get back to to lighter subjects, one yeah. thing I would love to watch with uh, with Pep is Young Justice because we're still getting new episodes, and it's um, you know, it's it, it feels like it's going to be you know just light and cartoony, but honestly, it's I think it's the best thing coming out of DC 
it has stakes all the little stuff you see adds up to big stuff and you see people dealing with real problems and real trauma as and as the show moves forward you get like five year time jumps between seasons and so the the people you thought you know that were kids doing this you get to see the ramification of those actions 10 years later and it's rough sometimes but the whole thing is like it's it it has adult themes without it trying to be edgy you know like it's it has a great balance of um being mature but not edgy being hopeful without cheesy and like being real you know yeah well I'll look that one up young justice where can you watch it it's on uh, hbo max i think it's the only place right now um well i'm sure we'll be able to find a first time for me um there's there's a lot of movies that i haven't seen y'all just not, aren't like doing well with uh, <laughs> suggesting them <laughs> i know chaco hasn't seen Continuum. august rush have you seen august rush kiki uh, august rush i haven't seen that one now wow have you seen love don't cost a thing with nick cannon yeah oh no <laughs> so i've seen like, all of funny. nick cannon stuff it's funny because like my pop culture knowledge there are certain things that i have never seen like i didn't see space jam until this year i'd um. never seen space jam. and i explain it to people because i grew up in the i grew up in a seventh-day adventist household and it was very strict about what i was allowed to watch i somehow just i was able to justify lord of the rings i got lord of the rings i got star wars i couldn't pull off harry potter for the longest time but Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, I was able to watch. So that's how I knew about those. Mm. But yeah, there was like a, from like the 90s until the 2000s, maybe the 17, 2017, 16. There's like this gap in my memory of pop culture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got some lovers, you know, um, of August Rush. Chris loves August Rush. Soda Man. August Rush. Um, you can Google it right now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Googling it as we speak. Super chatted 99 cents. Uh, well, apparently someone super chatted, super chatted 99 cents. Lord and Great Storm, thank you for the super chat. Um, that is one ramen pack. So thank you very much. Sport is highly appreciated. Um, uh, Travelers? Huh? <laughs> did, you, did you watch Travelers? Yes. Leverage. <laughs> Chuck. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Have you seen Limitless? The yes. show? Have you seen uh, White Collar? Mm-hmm. I've seen part of White Collar. I've seen episodes of it. Enough to, enough to maybe bite your lip over Neil Caffrey. Thirst traps. After <laughs> <laughs> have to, have to be exposed to them. We'll see. Um, I just had people start taking me in thirst traps now, so I'm now becoming that person. I mean, so. listen, you can't control it, but that's my FYP right now. <laughs> it is what it is. Well, it's that new light challenge, you know? <laughs> yes, that love you for infinity. I have one that's like... I have, a, go ahead. I have a plan for one. I just need to go and buy the buy a, a material for it. <laughs> I have I have one using Grogu. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, have you seen Continuum? Nope. That's what I asked you. No, you said <laughs> Travelers. I said Continuum before. Continuum was actually the very first one because it's oh. the next show I'm going to watch. Yeah, I've seen Continuum. Um, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of Canadian shows on Netflix that it's like. Have you seen Black Matter or Dark Matter? Yes, I've seen some of it. Um, what's the German time travel show? The German time travel? Uh, Darkness? No. Oh, just just Dark. Dark, right. Have you seen that? Yeah, you've seen that. <laughs> There's a lot of things I've seen. Um, but yeah, we're just about... I can't compete. <laughs> I, I just, I can't compete. <laughs> um, we have run severely over time. Um, and we're out of it. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this episode of Diet in the Force, episode 55. 
It seems like we have some jazz playing in the background for the audience. I hope you've been enjoying that music. Uh, let's take a look at who is here right now. Um, Harith, Star Wars Lawyer, Soda Man, X-Core Gamer Skills, um, Saint Pat, and Loden Great Storm, Bariqua Wookie, Xanatos 1138. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, hanging out with us. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, Kiki, do you have any final words? You want to plug yourself again? Uh, yes. So I am Black PNW Lady on TikTok. It's the only social media, public social media account that I got going for me now. But can join there. Watch me talk about Din Djarin, The Witcher, Bane, do th let, react to thirst traps. <laughs> <laughs> we, we go between like like literally I had like a scene analysis of a scene from the Dark Knight Rises that like blew up and then the next one is me like having a thirst trap so you're signing up for an experience yes you are <laughs> <laughs> also so you just whatever I want <laughs> follow her as well um, black PNW lady one that's her backup she had yes. a couple of scares uh, but I think that is largely over? I hope so. Yeah, like TikTok got mad at me for talking about racism, so I had to go make a backup account. It's so weird. Yeah, it do be like that. I'm like, you can't talk about that. How come How come the account is still up? Don't worry about that. Oh, okay. I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like the situation is, and just really quickly before we end this, I kind of feel like the situation is like, there are people who take their job seriously and people who just clock in yeah. and just go, bing, 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 bing. that's it. Clocking it in folks are the folks who have like, watching, my opinion. The TikToker with blackface, I reported all of their videos. One, oh one got taken down. So I feel like there was like a whole bunch of moderators that were just like phoning it in and just like, no, 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 no. And then one saw it, you know? Yeah, it was a yeah. while. Um, Chaco, any final thoughts before we end this? Um, You know, I, I love this community. I love you for mm -hmm. infinity. infinity. I love you 3000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, really quickly before we end it for, um, for good reminder, gentle reminder that, uh, level up lightsaber is having a, a highly discounted sale or a lot of their legacy lightsabers are on sale right now up until December 12th. I'm so gonna buy one. Uh, use my link. <laughs> Patience, Kiki. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's me being that's me being like um, hustling right now um, <laughs> but yeah seventh element.net slash lightsabers if you need a lightsaber heavily discounted and Luke's lightsaber is fifty dollars off right now up until December 12th so get on that it's better than a better than a stick um yeah I mean, I, I'm actually about to make a TikTok about level up lightsabers myself um, yes I do have an affiliate link too but more than that, I've been seeing so many lightsaber like advertisements and they all have the comments turned off because they are all scams. They are all fake. They've all stolen those that content from our mutuals um, for their advertisement you can for their scam companies. I report them every single time. FT, I, I don't know if it's an FTC guideline. It probably is regulation, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, Master Allen, we know him personally. We know that he packs the orders live sometimes. Um, level up light one. And um, he's just a cool dude. We had long conversations before I, I would agree to do anything because I, I yes. got burned before. I mean, Pepper remember that. We talked yes. to him for like three hours. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you sure. gotta be with who you get into business with, you know? Mm -hmm. Um... And so we want to thank, of course, Squadron 7. Thank you so much for those who joined today and those who will join in the future. But of course, the Squadron 7 pilots who are here now. Um, 
let me see here. We have Star Wars Scholar and the TIE Defender. Jesse moved. I don't know where he moved. Um, Star Wars Lawyer in the Lady Luck. Bee Dazzler in the Mantis. Marjay Skywalker in the Twilight with a Bariqua Wookiee. Mabe in the Razor Crest. Podwans Podcast and Kenobi in the Star Wars or the Starfighter 2. Soda Man in the T 70X Wing. Nadrex in the Black Ace. And the Steward of Ostagar in the Fury Class Interceptor. And of course. We also have St. Pat in the X-Wing, Kesko Hecho in the Whisper. There's Jesse. Jesse moved to the Superstar Destroyer fleet with Crest Grandmaster Bale, Harith Productions into the Paul, Nerd Connor and Gray with the U-Wings, Levi Bond in an Interceptor, Masa in the Y-Wings, x in the A-Wings, Cal, Carter, Carter, Karelia Coffee Works, or Haley in the Ghost, uh, Brian with the Beard in Boba Fett's Starship, should I? Am I? Am I? Am I going to drop that that gag? Should I? It it, it, it takes a while every time. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave that up to you. The Chaco and Arya and the Jedi Vector, uh, Jonski, Julia, and Xanatos, our reserve pilots, and our new one, Loading Great Storm, in his future Nubian um, Royal and Starship N one Starship Starfighter. Uh, look at that blank happy face just bouncing by. Don't know where that came from. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's like a tumbleweed. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Uh, we do have uh, Brian and a Brian and Soda Man who just followed Kiki. So yes, this podcast resulted in two new follows. Um, yeah, that is the end. On to the next one. For light and for life. We are all the Republic. This is the light. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all.